going out, not staying in, just hanging around with my head in a spin, but there is no need to scream and shout. We're not going out, we are not going out. I love a good mime artist. Dinner is served. Don't tell me you can't hear that. What? That. It's been bugging me for the last half hour. What, you think it's MI5? <laughs> Dinner's ready. Is it the microwave? No, it's not the bloody microwave. I've spent all afternoon cooking a proper meal in the oven. Does the oven beep? <laughs> you can't ignore these warning signals, you know. Don't worry. I fully intend to book us in to relate. <laughs> Maybe it's the carbon monoxide alarm. That can cause damage to the brain, you know. Or it might be the alarm on the stable door reminding us that horse bolted years ago. <laughs> have you checked the smoke alarm? Of course I have. Was it not that? Yes, Lucy, it was that. But I thought I'd leave it because I was finding the tune quite catchy. <laughs> it's not the smoke alarm, I've just changed the battery. So your phone, is it? No, my phone is in my bedside drawer and it's switched off. Why? Because I don't want my mates texting me the result of the footy. I'm going to watch it as soon as I find this bloody beep. You've forgotten, haven't you? What? That I've cooked a special meal for us both. Of course I've forgotten. What made me think of the smoke alarm? <laughs> I wish you'd listen to me when I tell you things. Hmm? <laughs> Please sit down. Well, obviously, I... <laughs> obviously, I can ignore it, if that's what you want. Yes, it is what I want. Just thought it might be bothering you. It's not bothering me. <laughs> Are you sure? Because it's driving me nuts. That's it. It's the sound of your nuts reversing into your body for protection. <laughs> an ambulance. <laughs> but I tell you what, it might be a fire engine. Please, stop it. Kids are a bit old for that, aren't they? It's mine. I'm having an affair with an eight-inch fireman. <laughs> He's six foot four. <laughs> Going to eat. So how is it? Lovely. <laughs> what is it? It's a carpaccio beef starter with pickled beetroot and a salad of green beans. <laughs> what did I just say it was? Carpaccio beep beef. <laughs> That's right, with pickled beetroot and a salad of green beeps. <laughs> Please, Lee, can you just ignore it? Of course I can. Are you sure? Yes. Good. Because when was the last time we had an evening together without any distractions? Think of the last time we had sex. I bet it was on the same night. Well, I hope so. If the two of us are having sex on different nights, we have got problems. <laughs> it's important to do things like this. So, like I told you earlier, we're going to spend quality time together this evening, eating nice food and dressed in our finest. <laughs> Sorry, you uh... Been under the floorboards. Spore, spore, I was going to put you there. <laughs> I was under there looking for whatever's causing the... Whatever. Doesn't matter. I'm, I'm ignoring it. <laughs> so, um, how's your day been? Fine. What you been doing? Well, Anna came round earlier on her way to meet Toby. They've gone away for the weekend. I did actually tell you all this before. I know. I was listening. So you know where they've gone then? Yes. <laughs> where? 
New... Castle. New York. New York. I was half listening. <laughs> they wanted a, a break from the daily grind of life. Thought you said they'd gone together. It's a romantic weekend away. <laughs> Maybe we should go away together soon. Sounds good. Which fancy? Actually, I searched online for a canal cruise the other day. A canal cruise? Yeah, it's a bit awkward, actually. The letter C on my keyboard doesn't work properly. <laughs> and I accidentally missed off the first letter C. And, uh, well, let's just say I wish I hadn't pressed Google Images. <laughs> anyway, maybe we don't even need a fancy holiday away. Like Anna said, a simple dinner for two at home can be another way to add a bit of romance to a marriage. Sorry, this was Anna's idea. Ignore that. <laughs> well, she prompted it. What? You seem to listen to what Anna tells you to do. No, I don't. What about that dairy-free fad? Quinoa milk is the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted. That's a bit of an exaggeration. A bit, maybe. <laughs> but what about all this? Anna comes round to tell you that we need to put more romance in our marriage, and you cook us a big meal. She didn't come round to say that. She just casually brought it up. So what did you come round for? To give me some new tea towels. Why? If you must know, she thought owls were looking a bit old and grubby. <laughs> oh, my God. Our tea towels aren't old. Charles and Diana are on one of them. <laughs> I don't know why you let her influence you so much. I don't. She just happened to mention that it might be nice for us to spend an evening together. No telly, no kids. No distractions. You know, chatting. About what? About us. Why? What's wrong with us? Why does there have to be anything wrong with us? You were just talking about the food you're eating. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it, does it? <laughs> no. Leave it. <laughs> in an intensive bloody care unit or something. You will be. Why? What's the main course? Sorry? <laughs> Look, nothing. Just, just give me two minutes to sort this out and then you'll have my full attention. Mm, will I, though? You're always distracted by something. If it's not a beep, it's your phone or the TV or an eBay auction. You didn't complain when I got that complete set of Grumbleweed's egg cups. <laughs> It's hard to complain, given I was so overwhelmed with sexual excitement. <laughs> what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? Lion taming? Hey, I'm checking out that smoke alarm. I thought you just put a new battery in. Yeah, but it was from the drawer, so I might have accidentally replaced an old battery for another old battery. And that's why it's beeping. How can you tell? I lick it. Oh, great. <laughs> My husband, the battery licker. <laughs> Maybe you can lick the conversation we were just having, see if that's now gone dead. <laughs> to be fair, Lucy, you were talking about tablecloths. Tea towels? <laughs> and I'm sorry if I'm boring you. Maybe I should do something more interesting. What if I emitted a high-pitched whining noise at regular intervals? What do you mean, if? <laughs> Please, can you leave it until after dinner? Look, it's got to be coming from somewhere. OK, fine. I'm going to tell you. Well, you know what it is? I wasn't going to say earlier, you won't like it. Go on. There is no beeping sound. You're going mad. <laughs> it's not in my head. I mean, you heard that. Heard what? And that. I didn't hear a thing. And that one. There wasn't one that time. Ah! a fire when you can destroy the house by yourself. <laughs> that, that is fine. Oh, my God, Lee. At this rate, we'll end up like Anna and Toby going halfway round the world to try and save their marriage. You what? Have you checked the thermostat in the fridge? That makes a beeping sound. <laughs> You said that they'd gone to New York for a little break. You didn't say it was to save their marriage. Well, you know what they're like. Always a crisis. Not so bad that they literally go to the headquarters of the United Nations. <laughs> Come on, what's going on? OK. 
Yes, they are a bit desperate. So they decided to spend some time together in New York to try and fix things. A big apple a day keeps the marriage guidance counsellor away. <laughs> is that what this is, then? What do you mean? All this. Are we fixing things? Of course not. They've flown to New York. All I've done is make us dinner. Yeah, yeah. But a very fancy dinner. It's making me nervous. I know. I'm making you use a knife and fork and everything. <laughs> Just be honest. Do you think we're getting like Anna and Toby? Of course I don't. I just think... Oh, my God! See? You do think we've got issues. This is why I don't like having serious conversations, because every time we have one, I end up finding out we've got marriage problems. Well, if you could manage a serious conversation once in a while, we wouldn't have marriage problems. So you do think we've got marriage problems? <sighs> of course not. We're certainly not as bad as Anna and Toby. Well, Punch and Judy aren't as bad as Anna and Toby. <laughs> Actually, you're a bit like Punch. Oh, so now it's the nose. <laughs> If you're trying to ruin my confidence, well, that's the way to do it. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure that I appreciate being compared to a person who's capable of killing their spouse with a string of sausages. Punch doesn't do that. I meant Anna. <laughs> I told you, I'm not comparing us to Anna and Toby. Yes, this was all a scam, just to get me to have a fancy dinner and a conversation. Uh, well, of course, when you put it like that, I sound like a total monster. <laughs> you think we've got marital issues. Well, I wasn't sure to begin with, Lee, but you've done an excellent job of proving that we have. Bloody hell! I bet it's the washing machine! Where's the washing machine? <laughs> Look. I'm not saying we're anything like Anna and Toby. All I'm trying to do is spend enough quality time together so that we never do end up like them. But it was Anna's idea. Yes, but does it matter? Actually, I think it was the washing machine. <laughs> Good. So can we now enjoy the rest of the evening with no distractions? Yeah. So, sorry, I, I admit maybe I was a little bit distracted. And I'm sorry for not telling you the real reasons for Anna and Toby going away. I can see it upset you. <laughs> Certainly left a nasty taste in my mouth. <laughs> like Anna said to me today, she and Toby never chose to be horrible to each other, but over the years they stopped communicating. And the cracks started to grow, and now they do choose to be horrible to each other. And as a friend, she just doesn't want us ever going the same way. So what you're saying, if there is something that you consider an issue, even if it's a very small problem, don't ignore it. Get to the root of the problem and fix it. OK, you were right about the beep. Thank you. <laughs> and because I did get to the root of the problem, it means that you now have my undivided attention the rest of the evening. Good. <laughs> so, they're off to New York. <laughs> mm. They've probably made it there by now. Well, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> well, we don't need to go to New York, because I am happy to stay here and talk about our relationship with my beautiful wife at this beautiful dining table having this meal. <laughs> Thanks. And it's not a case of you just sitting there with me listing all the things you're doing wrong. I know. It's not about never loading the dishwasher or not replacing the toilet roll or always slamming doors or the weird noises you make when you're breathing. <laughs> Or the constant scratching all night long like a gerbil. <laughs> or the way... Yeah, I get it. You don't want to miss them. <laughs> and I'm the same. I don't want to start banging on about how you roll your knickers on the floor when you take them off and then just leave them there like uneaten croissants for days on end. <laughs> exactly. I want to talk about the good things, too. In 
your own time. The good things. You're quite good at opening jam jars. This is bordering on hero worship. And you've become very much more careful with your toenail clippings. That makes a huge difference. <laughs> but most of all, you're loving and you're a good dad. And I still fancy you. This is about demonstrating how strong our relationship is. Exactly. When was the last time Anna and Toby did that? Years ago, probably. When's the last time they pushed the food to one side and had sex on the dining table? <laughs> it wasn't quite what I had in mind. I could clear the table now, if you like, and put the plates straight in the dishwasher. <laughs> a very hot set. In these rinse aid. Ah, we're back in the room. <laughs> I just think it, you know, be a nice sort of way to celebrate our very special evening. Well, it would certainly be in keeping with the rest of the night. You spending ages searching for something you can't find until in the end I tell you not to bother. <laughs> Leave and whisper that special thing in your ear. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh, careful with the teal dinner service. It's you from John Lewis. Mummy? Oh, God. Mummy? Will you lie with me until I go to sleep? OK, I'm coming. Hang on, what are you doing? Going up to lie with Molly. Oh. What about our yeah, evening? Oh, I'd only be two minutes. Sorry, is that your line? <laughs> Why, hang on, hang on. It's not going to be two minutes, though, is it? Because we've been here before. Molly will take ages to go to sleep and you will fall asleep next to her and then I'll be left to entertain myself. <laughs> I don't mean... Well, I have to go to her. Of course you do. You don't have to lie with her, do you? You can tell us to go back to bed and then we can carry on with our very special evening. Well, I can't just ignore our daughter. All right. But I'm supposed to ignore that beep. Is this about not getting sex? No. It's about spending an evening talking about our relationship together. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it would be a nice way to end the evening if you're still up for it. I won't be long. Here, have some more starter. You have some starter. I don't want it. Yeah, you can dish it out, but you can't take it. <laughs> Stay here, spend some quality time with your husband with no distractions, or go up them stairs, fall asleep next to Molly, and prove you're a hypocrite. <laughs> Actually, maybe you should just go up. <laughs> We were going to have sex on the table, weren't we? I know, but I'm willing to be the grown-up in this situation. <laughs> no, I insist. Get your kit off. All right. I will. <laughs> You'll never do it. Try me. Mummy? What's she doing? What's the matter, sweetheart? Can't you sleep? I kept hearing a beeping noise. Oh, just ignore it! <laughs> Sorry. I mean, try and ignore it, darling. Then I heard you and Dad arguing. Well, grown-up conversations are complicated. Sometimes we disagree and then we make up again. Is that why you were taking your clothes off? <laughs> if you want to go back down with Dad, I'll understand, you know. It's important to spend time together, just the two of you. You're such a lovely girl, Molly. But promise not to. We weren't. <laughs> We're in bed. Actually, I will have some more of that starter. <laughs> I thought you 
thought you were ignoring it. I am. So what are you doing up there? Looking for the dishwasher? Sorry. No, I'm sorry. Let's find out what's causing this beep together. Really? Yeah. We're a team, and if it's bothering you, it's bothering me. See, this is something Anna and Toby would never do. Work as a team and admit when they're wrong. Anna's only ever admitted to one mistake. What, to Toby? Yeah. He's the one mistake she's admitted to. <laughs> I feel sorry for the poor bugger who sat next to them on the plane. Yeah. Who needs a film when you can watch the Texas Chainsaw Massacre being acted out in real life right next to you? <laughs> you know, uh, maybe Anna did us a favour. You know, telling us to spend time together. Was it her idea to have sex on the dining table? We're not having sex on the dining table, Lee. <laughs> Why not? People have Ginster's pasties in bed. <laughs> not normal people. <laughs> Come down, you're not going to find anything up there. What's that? What? On that shelf over there. Looks like a phone. Well, it's not mine. Mine's in my bag. It's got to be yours, Lucy, because I've already told you. Mine is in my bedside drawer. But why would I have two phones? And why would I keep the other one up there? I don't know. You tell me. Sorry? One minute you're acting all weird and saying that we have to chat about us over dinner. Then you tell me to stop looking up there. And then I find a hidden phone up there. Is this audio description for the blind, or do you actually have a point? <laughs> I know it isn't my phone, Lee, so it has to be yours. What's up? Did you forget where you put it and the beeping thing was an excuse to go searching for it before I found it? If it was mine, why would I tell you that I found it? Double bluff? Or you mentioning a double bluff is a triple bluff. Or you mentioning a triple bluff is a quadruple bluff. Or you mentioning a quadruple bluff is a... <laughs> What's five? <laughs> Interesting that your other phone has been in your drawer all night, switched off. What's the matter? Worried someone might text that one by mistake? Oh, you've got balls. So you've got man boobs. <laughs> Styling it out, pretending I'm the one with two phones. <laughs> Talk about distractions. What's the ultimate distraction? Is it going insane and having paranoid delusions? Oh, right, so I'm going mad now, am I? That's called gas piping. <laughs> It's gas lighting, you pillock. And it doesn't count when your other half has actually lost their mind. I know what gas lighting is. It's when you go around pretending that everything's fine when it's bleeding obvious that everything is awful. Like dinner. <laughs> oh, I see. We're bringing up my cooking now, are we? Well, it was hard not to bring it up when I was eating it. <laughs> well, maybe it was deliberately bad because I didn't want you having the calories. What's that supposed to mean? What do you think it means? You look like you're about to go into hibernation. <laughs> you cheeky sod. You ungrateful shit. <laughs> you two-phoned twat. It's not my phone. Right. Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's have a look at it. Fine. Anything you want to tell me before we do this? Yes. Stop eating wagon wheels for breakfast. <laughs> about the phone. No. Anything you want to tell me? Right. Let's do this the hard way, shall we? Ah! <laughs> oh! Oh. oh my God, Lee, are you okay? Can you sit up? I don't think I can move. Oh God, why? You're kneeling on me, arm. <laughs> Hemorrhage in olives. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't care about the damage as long as you're okay. Promise. Yes. Good, because I'm completely fine. <laughs> you know I'm not really cheating, don't you? Of course I do, and I'm not cheating on you. I know. You can't even cheat a Cluedo without me finding out. I'm sorry. 
Just saying it was Colonel Mustard with the lead pipe in. And what about accusing me of having an affair? That's what I meant. <laughs> Well, at least we now know what's causing the beep. It's Anna. She's texting from Toby's phone. This one's hers. So what's he doing in our kitchen? She must have accidentally got it wrapped up in the tea towels she gave me. Well, why were the tea towels up there? I was saving them for best. Why would you have best tea towels? <laughs> they all end up getting manky and covered in stains anyway. You've got best pants. <laughs> What does it say? Lucy, if you're reading this, you've obviously found my phone. Toby hasn't got your number and Lee isn't answering his, so I had no way of contacting you other than this. Sorry if my phone's been beeping all day with work messages. I bet it's been driving Lee mad. Maybe this place is bugged. I feel terrible about what I said to you, Lucy. I only hinted that you and Lee had marriage problems because I was jealous. What a cow! I know, I'm a cow. <laughs> you and Lee have the best relationship in the world. Well, when she says things like that, I'm glad you do listen to her. <sighs> so now what? Well, dinner's a write-off. Shame, I bet it was lovely. Oh. Looks like there's uh, only one thing for it. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Daddy! <laughs> Coming! Let's go!